Hello from First Presbyterian Church, Clinton, Missouri. This is Nancy Gillard, and this is our midweek message on January the 27th, 2021. Today I'm going to do a little bit of background work. We are studying through the book of Genesis uh, from now until the probably um, the middle of Lent. Ash Wednesday starts on February the 17th. So we hope that you'll participate in our Ash Wednesday service. But until that time, we'll be going through Genesis, looking at the great stories that are the foundation of not just our Bible, but also of our faith. And one of the things that I want to explore on this day with you all is this idea of God creating in his own image, he created them. This is a verse where it begins to teach us about the um, creation of humans, Adam and Eve, and particularly that verse in Genesis 1:27 that says, "He created in um, He created them in His image." So we'll be talking a little bit about that. Um, please remember, the church is open for church services on Sunday morning, so if you'd like to come to church. We will be ma wearing masks. We will be socially distanced in the sanctuary. You can come to service and go ahead and go up into the balcony, enjoy church from the balcony, as well as um, the fellowship hall. And if you would like to come to church and stay in your car, we had, have had drive-in church all year long. So if you'd like to stay in your car, you'll tune to radio station FM 87.9. And you can hear the message as well as the announcements and the hymns and all those things that happen during church on radio station 87.9 here in Clinton, Missouri. So if you'll please bow your heads, we'll begin today's midweek message. Let's pray. Almighty God, you teach us in so many different ways. Sometimes we forget that it's, that it's um, the foundation of our faith to go back to the beginning. In the beginning, God created. Thank you, Lord, that uh, we have these words to be our foundation, but also, Lord, that our uh, scripture brings us from the past into today and into tomorrow so that we might continue to do the work that you have called us to through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. So a couple things to begin with. And... Um, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to particularly focus on that term in the beginning. He created them, male and female. He created them in his image. This is in Genesis 1. But in order to do that, I really want to turn back to an ancient understanding of Scripture. And this is called Midrash. Midrash is a way that the uh, rabbis, as they were teaching Scripture back about 200 years before Christ was born until 200 years after Christ was born, they would take the scripture themselves and then they would find more in the scripture. Per particularly, Midrash comes from the word to draw out. So they would look at uh, a passage, uh, a part of the passion, or maybe just a word in the passage and draw out meaning from that particular place. And, the found, and um, what they would work with, so they would be able to have a boundary of what the Midrash was and what the Midrash did, was they would look at Scripture in three different ways. They would say that Scripture is God-breathed, inspired, authoritative, and therefore every story, every phrase, every word is loaded with meaning. Certainly we believe that too. And that is exactly what I do when I prepare the sermon. And the sermon is looking at scripture and drawing out uh, the authority, the God-breathed message that can be shared with the people. So actually, each Sunday sermon is also a midrash. Midrash also says that scripture is a living text, therefore the meaning isn't fixed or absolute. Instead, the meanings are constantly making themselves known. The text lives in the community, and it lives with each generation. So it is a message for today, 
but it also is a message for those people that will follow us. And that's very important that, that scripture is a living text today, yesterday, as well as tomorrow. And then finally, um, what I think is very, very helpful that I think that we forget is that scripture is gapped. There's a gap in scripture, and we have to understand that. And that is that there are rough spots and even silences in text. Therefore, unusual wording or omissions and unanswered questions call for imaginative grappling. Sometimes the imaginative grappling is to look at the scriptures themselves and say, what is the context that this scripture is in? Or to look at the scripture and to say, where in all of scripture do, does this word or this concept come up over and over and over and over again? So the scripture that we're particularly looking at where it says he created them in his image that is a very strong passage and, um, and a, uh, a, a phrase that the Apostle Paul uses over and over and over again to help us to understand the salvation of Jesus Christ and the fact that God created us in the image of God. So Paul uses that. So sometimes to take a, a, a cluster of words, a scripture, a long passage, and see where that, again, can be found in other places of Scripture. But the last thing I think that is an excellent discipline for this idea that Scripture is gapped is in the end there where it says, unusual wording, omissions, unanswered questions call for imaginative grappling with the text. Sometimes I would really encourage you to consider the imaginative grappling to be quiet and private and peaceful in your own heart. To look at the text that you may not understand and to say to yourself, there is a secret in here for me. What is the secret that God has? It almost makes the text mysterious, highly personal, and, and it also allows us to recognize that sometimes secrets are not shared. They're secrets. We can spend a lifetime trying to discover the answer to a secret. Sometimes they come quickly. But sometimes we have to assume that we're not going to find out what the secret is. That is between God and what God has in his scripture. And we may never find it out. That is this concept that scripture is gapped. Rough spots, silences in text. I think that's very powerful when you dig in deep into wanting to know what scripture is saying. So sometimes, instead of immediately coming up with a solution of what is this scripture saying, to be silent, to listen to those words, and to realize that you may never understand what God is trying to teach in this particular passage. It's a secret. You're not ready for it yet. And you'll continue to pray for it. You'll continue to consider the words that are given. And trust God. That God knows the secret. Until you do. So I'd encourage you. That's a discipline. It's a good discipline. And try to think about scripture in that way. But let me read you an essay about the image of God. Um, that I think helps to explain all of God's meaning behind this particular phrase, the image of God, that is so important in Genesis, so crucial in Genesis. So God created humankind in God's image, Genesis 1.27. Image of God. In the Latin, that's called the Imago Dei, a phrase which is rich in possible meanings. The official doctrine of the Imago Dei in Christian churches have emphasized a variety of interpretations. Each emphasis speaks to us in different ways for different times. We might think on three broad interpretations based on three centers of our life. The head, the heart, and the will to action. 
the, ima the imago dei, or the image of God, the imago dei, is reflected in the head, that is, in our ability to think, to reason, to use words, to plan, and to remember. Humans have the capability to make judgments about reality, to contemplate reality, to imagine alternative realities, and to communicate these things. We can deliberate. We can make decisions. The Imago Dei reflects the heart. God is love, and we are called to love. If humans are to love God, then humans must love one another because we are all stamped with the Imago Dei. Each person has the expression of God. Each distinction between person and persons is secondary to the fundamental standing of each person as an expression of the image of God. You are the image of God. I am the image of God. And so we have to respect that image between us. The biblical record attributes the emotions of anger, joy, regret. Those are all godly um, emotions. We see God with those emotions. Um, they are deep longings in the essence of the heart of God, and they are the essence of human beings as well. God has a passion for relationships. We have a longing for love and acceptance, for being known heart to heart. The Imago Dei also is a reflection of the will to action. We long to make a difference. We want our work to be meaningful. Jews, the Jewish rabbis, speak of the task of Tikkum Olam, the healing of the world. Tikkum Olam. Healing the world is an ethics of care, restoration, and reconciliation. Tikkum Olam is not viewed as a return for some long lost perfection. So we're not just looking back and romanticizing how good things used to be in the old days. But rather, Tikkum Olam is the process of making this world better through loving acts of kindness. It is the will to action. Action may also be found in the creative task. God creates. That's what we learn from Genesis chapter 1. God creates, and so do we. And that is exciting. We do it constantly. Maybe you are a person that uh, creates because you enjoy journaling. And so as you are writing and you are journaling, you are creating this prose, these statements, these flowers of beautiful words that are inspirational, that touch your head and your heart as well as your action. And in that, you have the Imago Dei, which is your creativity. Maybe you don't journal very well, but you love making a good dinner or a wonderful dessert. So creative, right? To create that wonderful stew or that delicious cheesecake, whatever it is that you make. There's such a satisfaction of creation through that. And certainly we are creative in our relationships. How could I be married to my husband, Grant Gillard, for the 35 years that we've been married and not realize that it has been a passion of creation? We are not the same people that we were when we got married back in 1987. We are not the same uh, uh, husband and wife that we were after we had children. Children changed the relationship, and we became creative in a completely different way. You understand what I'm talking about. Creative in our relationships, and then also creative in our jobs. Whatever that job has to be, happens to be for you. I know that David Dahl recently retired, and so he's going to be seeing how he's going to be filling his time now that he's retired. And tip of the cap to David, congratulations on your retirement. But each of us fills our day with creating things and creating for God. That's what that means as well. Humans are the embodiment and a reflection of the creativity of God. Not just 
creativity that happened in Genesis 1 so many, many, many years ago, but creativity that happens right now. Humans made in God's image should make things as God makes them. For the sake of doing well, things that are well, um, I'm sorry, humans made in God's image should make things as God makes them for the sake of doing well a thing that is well worth doing. Our best, our work is best when it is a creative activity undertaken for the love of the work itself. So I encourage you to look at the Imago Dei as it is in your life as well as in every other life. Every life is stamped with the image of God, stamped right on our heart. Whether it is someone that you are in relationship with, whether it is a family member, whether it is a stranger, each individual was created by God. It says so in Genesis 1.27, and so God created humankind in God's image, they are created. I hope that you've enjoyed this. This next Sunday, we're going to talk more about uh, how God created male and female, Adam and Eve. I think it'll be a really interesting sermon. I hope that you'll be at church for that. If you can't come to church, please go ahead and find us on the Facebook page, as well as on our church uh, website, fpcclintonmo.com. That first letter is F as in first, so FPC, First Presbyterian Church. ClintonMo.com. Thank you very much, and let's close with prayer. Almighty God, thank you that each of us has one thing, one precious thing in common, and that is that we each carry exactly the same image of God in our lives. It never goes away. It always is with us. And so in that image, Lord, let us be pleasing to you. And we pray these things in your Son's name. Amen. God bless you.